Story number one, The Midnight Stalker, a chilling encounter on the graveyard shift. Working the late night shift at a 24-hour convenience store in the quiet town of Cedarvale wasn't something Jess had planned to do forever, but it fit around her college schedule. Most nights were uneventful, with only a few regulars popping in and she used the time to catch up on studies or daydream about her future. But one unsettling encounter changed all that. It was just after 2.30 a.m. on a Tuesday when a tall, disheveled man strolled into the store. Jess gave him a friendly nod, but he didn't respond. Instead, he wandered through the aisles in an odd, slow manner, like he was searching for something or someone. She tried to ignore him, but her unease grew when he began circling back, always glancing her way. Finally, he approached the counter, his dark eyes studying her intensely. What's a girl like you doing here alone at this hour? He asked, his tone low and unsettling. Jess forced a polite smile and replied that she was just doing her job. He chuckled softly leaning in a little too close. You look like you could use some company, he murmured, his gaze lingering. Jess felt a chill run down her spine. She tried to divert his attention, asking if he needed help finding something, but he just shrugged and stepped back, continuing his slow, predatory circles around the store. She took a few deep breaths, her heart racing, hoping he'd get bored and leave, but he didn't. Instead, he started asking her personal questions, where she lived, when her shift ended, if she was alone. Her unease turned to fear when he reached over the counter, his hand brushing hers. She quickly jerked back, trying to keep her composure. I need to check the back, she said, feigning calmness, before slipping into the storeroom and locking the door behind her. She texted her manager, hoping for an immediate response, but none came. She waited, heart pounding, in the silence, feeling trapped and vulnerable. After a tense few minutes, she slowly opened the door and peeked out. The store was empty, but the door chimed as he re-entered. Jess locked herself back in, trembling as he lingered outside occasionally tapping on the door and muttering to himself. When her manager finally arrived, Jess felt an overwhelming wave of relief. But as they reviewed the security footage, they saw something that sent shivers down her spine. The man had been watching her from the parking lot for nearly an hour before he entered. Her boss reported the incident to the police, but they were unable to locate him. To this day, Jess still feels his presence whenever she works the night shift, convinced that he's out there, watching, waiting for the right moment to return. Story number two, The Silent Watcher. A bone-chilling night shift encounter, Darla had worked the night shift at the Lone Pines Diner for almost a year. Nestled off a desolate stretch of highway, it mostly attracted truckers and the occasional late-night traveler, so when a slow Tuesday evening rolled around, she wasn't expecting anything out of the ordinary. Little did she know that tonight would be the one she'd never forget. Around 2 a.m., a stranger appeared outside, standing just at the edge of the flickering fluorescent lights by the parking lot. He was tall, his figure mostly obscured by an oversized hoodie, hands jammed into his pockets, face hidden in shadow. Darla gave a quick wave, assuming he was just another customer who'd come inside to escape the cold. But he didn't move. He just stared. At first, she tried to ignore him, chalking it up to the random oddities she'd become accustomed to working the graveyard shift but something about the man's unbroken gaze felt sinister, chilling even. 
Every time she glanced out the window, he was there, his dark silhouette, a constant, silent presence. Darla's heart began to race, each minute dragging out longer, as his figure loomed, unwavering. Growing anxious, she moved to lock the front door, hoping he'd just walk away. As she turned the key, she dared another glance. The man took a slow step forward, still staring, his face barely visible beneath the streetlight's glow. His lips were twisted into a chilling half-smile, one that didn't reach his eyes. Darla felt a knot of dread tighten in her stomach. Swallowing her fear, she ducked behind the counter and pulled out her phone, dialing the police. As she waited, her mind raced with unsettling thoughts. What did he want? Why was he just standing there? A faint scraping sound echoed from outside, followed by a slow, rhythmic tap on the glass door. She peeked over the counter, her heart in her throat, only to see his pale face pressed against the glass. Those dark eyes still locked onto hers. A primal fear coursed through her as she realized he was waiting for her to open the door. Moments later, flashing red and blue lights lit up the diner's walls, and the man turned, walking away without a single glance back. By the time the police arrived, he had vanished, leaving only his eerie presence lingering in the cold air. For weeks, Darla struggled to shake the feeling of being watched. Every night, she'd find herself glancing outside, fearing that the silent watcher would return to haunt her again. Story number three, the basement secret, chilling phone calls that led to a nightmarish discovery. Elliot had been working late shifts at the Quick Mart, a small convenience store in a quiet part of town, for just over a month. It was usually slow at night, the perfect time for him to catch up on his studies while ringing up the occasional customer. But one Thursday night, things took a terrifying turn that would haunt him long after his shift ended. Around midnight, an older man came into the store, his demeanor unsettling from the start. He shuffled through the aisles, his gaze never quite meeting Elliot's, yet somehow Elliot felt watched the entire time. Finally, the man bought a few odd items, a spool of wire, duct tape, and a flashlight, and left without saying a word. Uneasy, Elliot shrugged it off, dismissing the man as another eccentric nighttime shopper. Little did he know, this would be the beginning of a nightmare. An hour later, the phone rang. Elliot answered with his usual greeting, expecting a routine call, perhaps someone checking on their lost wallet or asking about store hours. But instead, he was met with silence. Just as he was about to hang up, he heard breathing on the other end. It was faint and deliberate, with an eerie familiarity. He hung up, his pulse quickening. Then, just minutes later, the phone rang again, this time with quiet, disturbing whispers. Elliot couldn't make out any words, but the tone was chilling, almost as if the caller was right there with him. The calls kept coming, each more unnerving than the last, until after an hour, they suddenly stopped. Exhausted and rattled, Elliot finished his shift and hurried home, hoping a few hours sleep would erase the strange encounter. But as he lay in bed, his phone vibrated again. Another call. This time, a familiar voice whispered his name, each syllable drawn out with a sense of twisted amusement. A chill ran down his spine. How did this person know his name? Determined to shake off the fear, Elliot decided to investigate the next day. In his basement, he found a stack of strange items arranged on his workbench. That same spool of wire, pieces of duct tape, and several flashlight batteries scattered around. How had they gotten there? 
he realized, with growing horror, that the man must have been inside his house at some point. Panicked, he reported everything to the police. They searched but found no clues as to who the man was or how he'd managed to enter his home. From then on, every creak and shadow in his basement filled him with a paralyzing fear, as though the stranger might return to finish what he had started. Elliot never worked the night shift again, but to this day, he's haunted by the memory of that night, the basement, the eerie phone calls, and the feeling that someone, somewhere, still knows exactly where he lives. Story number four, The Midnight Van, a police officer's terrifying encounter with the dead and the living. Officer Maria Sanchez had always believed she'd seen it all. Working the night shift in a city notorious for its share of crime, she was no stranger to the darker side of humanity. But nothing had prepared her for what she would encounter on a cold November night, a night that would change her life forever. Around 2.30 a.m., she was patrolling a deserted stretch near the industrial district when she spotted an old, rusted van parked awkwardly on the shoulder. At first, she thought it was abandoned, maybe someone who had broken down and left it behind. But as she approached, something felt off. The van's windows were completely blacked out, and there was an eerie stillness about it. She radioed in her location and cautiously made her way to the driver's side. The door was unlocked, creaking open with an ominous groan. Shining her flashlight inside, Maria froze. The beam revealed bodies, lifeless, stacked like twisted dolls, their faces obscured and skin ghostly pale. A nauseating smell of decay filled the van as she stumbled back, choking on the thick stench. Before she could fully process the scene, she heard a shuffle from behind. Her hand instinctively went to her holster, but she wasn't quick enough. A figure emerged from the darkness, a man with hollow eyes and a cold smirk. He moved with terrifying silence, closing the distance in seconds. Maria raised her gun, but the man lunged, slamming her against the side of the van. They struggled, her mind racing as adrenaline surged through her veins. With a burst of strength, she managed to break free, pushing him back just enough to draw her weapon. The man, realizing he had lost the upper hand, took a step back, his eyes never leaving hers. For a chilling moment, they were locked in a silent standoff, her heart pounding in her ears. Then he turned and sprinted into the darkness, disappearing as if he had never been there at all. Shaken and gasping for breath, Maria called for backup, her voice trembling. The team that arrived quickly secured the area, but by then the man was long gone, vanished without a trace. The van, however, remained a grim reminder of the horror she'd just survived. The bodies were eventually identified as missing persons, but the killer was never found. Maria returned to duty, but that night left her haunted. She couldn't shake the image of those lifeless bodies or the feeling of being so close to death. Every night shift since, she feels a chill run down her spine haunted by the memory of that van and the man with hollow eyes who may still be out there lurking in the shadows. Story number five, the shadows in the cornfield, a night patrol gone wrong. Officer Jake Reynolds knew his small town's farmlands well, having grown up in the rural landscape of Mill Creek. It was the kind of place where people left their doors unlocked where fields of corn and wheat stretched for miles under the night sky. But that familiar comfort vanished one night when he was called to check on a suspicious vehicle parked on the edge of an overgrown cornfield. 
it was just after midnight when he arrived. A rusty, mud-streaked van sat on a dirt path leading into the corn, its headlights dim as if recently turned off. Jake's stomach churned as he stepped out of his cruiser. There was something eerie about the van's silence, the darkness of the fields surrounding it like walls closing in. As he approached, his flashlight beam caught a figure sitting motionless in the driver's seat, a man with an unnervingly blank expression, staring straight ahead. Jake tapped on the window. Sir, this is Officer Reynolds with Mill Creek PD. Everything all right here? The man slowly turned, his eyes vacant and unsettling. He opened the door without a word, stepping out in a slow, almost mechanical way. The hairs on Jake's neck prickled. The man's movements were too deliberate, his gaze piercing through the darkness. And for a moment, Jake could swear the man's lips twitched into an unnatural grin. Sir, I'm going to need you to keep your hands where I can see them, Jake commanded, his hand hovering near his holster. But the man didn't respond. Instead, he took a sudden step forward, his body tense, muscles coiled. In an instant, he lunged. The force of the man's attack sent Jake stumbling backward, narrowly keeping his footing as he reached for his weapon. The stranger's grip was like iron, fingers clawing at Jake's uniform. His expression twisted with a malicious intent Jake had never seen before. In a split-second decision, Jake fired his weapon. The man crumpled, the eerie silence of the cornfield returning, save for Jake's ragged breathing. He called for backup, but a wave of guilt washed over him as he stared at the figure on the ground, unmoving. What if he'd misread the situation? What if he'd acted too quickly? The investigation that followed cleared Jake, but his mind remained trapped in the field that night. The shadows in the corn seemed to follow him home, lurking in every corner of his mind. To this day, he avoids that stretch of road, haunted by the memories of the man in the cornfield and the unsettling question he'll never answer. Was he right or had he let fear pull the trigger? Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, share, and comment below.